Well, he was a man of great decency, integrity, and honor. And I think his passing does mark the end of an era, uh, an era when politics were classy and really less polarized uh, than they are right now. Uh, he was a man of great kindness and generosity, of humanity and vision. It's hard to imagine someone that could have been a pilot uh, in World War II, 58 missions flown, shot down by the Japanese, and yet also uh, at the uh, presidency in the White House when the Berlin Wall fell. He was at the center of world affairs for 25 years, the center of American politics for more than 30 years. And uh, whether he was at home or abroad, his reputation for honesty, for uh, good personal relations, for good humor, it just preceded him. And I think that his basic skills, his good character, really helped him achieve all of these things. So, so Jim, you mentioned the passing of an era at this stage here. Take us through what it was like in terms of era between then and now in terms of markets, the economy, how the nation stacks up economically speaking. Is it different now a lot than it was back then when, when, when George H.W. Bush was president of the United States? Well, I think it is very different right now because you've got to remember that during the Reagan era, uh, the United States economy was a uh, uh, very strong performer. We shed off the malaise of the 1970s. There was a real sense of confidence and vision about America at the time. And then the end of the Cold War also seemed to open up uh, possibilities. The United States had the world's strongest economy. There was no superpower level competitor. And it seemed like the post-World War II order that the United States had established was really going to be the basis of an enduring uh, Pax Americana. And what we see right now is a U.S. economy that is still great, still strong, but no longer as dominant as it was. And also a United States of America that is facing peer competitors. Uh, Russia has uh, reasserted its presence as non-communist but an authoritarian country. China has risen dramatically, in part because George Bush actually helped China join the WTO or made that initial decision to allow uh, China to join the WTO. He began that process. And in fact, he was ambassador to China. Let's not forget that. So today, we have a world in which the position of the United States is uh, not as certain, not as sure. Uh, the confidence that we felt during the 80s and 90s, even the confidence going into the Clinton years, is, uh, is uh, shaken now. I think that, uh, you know, there is a strong case that the leadership we had uh, from President Bush was uh, appropriate for the time. It was uh, humane. It was not... Um, it was humane, it was sure. gentle, it was humble, but still, I mean, he said he would never apologize to the United States of America. He was a very strong man with a gentle exterior.